Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to share an uh, interesting problem about the conic section uh, that I've seen on uh, the Chinese Bilibili site, uh, which is a problem that used for um, college entrance examination for the top un top tier university in China. Uh, this problem is about uh, conic section and the lines intersections. Uh, and the original problem asks about sort of optimization of um, a distance or a range of a distance that you can find given uh, uh, some constraint. And But after I played with around some uh, parameters in the problem, and I find it's quite interesting because uh, it generates um, a family of lines. And it turns out there is a very neat analytic solution about the envelope that's wrapped by, uh, uh, by the lines. Uh, though the problem is for a college entrance examination, it's uh, supposed to only cons uh, consider anything we have learned in uh, high school level, which does not include uh, the envelope of family of lines, which is uh, basically uh, something uh, even without the knowledge of calculus, you can see um, given a line, a, a bunch of lines with uh, certain uh, restrictions, uh, there is an illusional curve that's wrapped by uh, these lines. And we are going to find uh, the, the, the exact curve that you see here. Uh, usually this requires some uh, calculus uh, knowledge, which is uh, beyond uh, typically the implicit derivatives, uh, which is beyond um, most, I mean, even in the even United States, AP course probably won't cover that. Uh, but in, in this problem, we can actually follow um, the basic step-by-steps in that video with uh, mathematical codes. And uh, we find the uh, envelope of the family of lines with just uh, um, a simple uh, high school level uh, math, and uh, which is also can be found as a, a modified example in the Wikipedia page for uh, envelope. So let's start. So given a ellipse, uh, it's a, a parametric or it's a contour is uh, described by this blue equation. It's x squared over four um, plus y squared over three. Uh, equal to 1 and intersects with a line that's L given by Y equal to uh, K times X plus M. And uh, here is a restriction that um, the slope, is, the absolute value of slope is between uh, minus 1 half and positive 1 half. And this line intersects with uh, the ellipse at two points. Uh, one, uh, one is A and the other is B and O is the origin. Uh, but this line is not arbitrary because uh, there is a requirement uh, about the intersection or the line is that um, if uh, the, the A, B, and O, and the P forms a, a parallel, uh, parallelogram, uh, this is a very strong uh, condition for the lines. Uh, because, for example, if you uh, just think about a very trivial case, you know, you, you have a circle, right? And this is O, uh, and you draw a line through that. Uh, because parallelogram uh, is, can be formed by rotate this triangle this triangle 180 with respect to this point. So in most cases, there is no guarantee that this point, this, the uh, O, will, will be uh, on the circle again after you rotate the, uh, the triangle uh, 180 degree with respect to the, uh, uh, the sym symmetric center. So um, you, you really need to be careful to choose the proper K and M so that this could happen. And we will see there's actually very strong 
uh, parametric relation between the KM after we solve the problem. And um, with this restriction, uh, you will have um, a select of a line, which also means if you ch change the, uh, the slope of this line, the interception of this line with respect to the axis, x axis or the y axis is also determined. Um, so with these constraints, uh, you ask to find the range of OP, you know, uh, the distance of OP, or it means the P, uh, given the, um, uh, the equation for the ellipse, uh, the P cannot move you know, arbitrarily around the ellipse, uh, e eclipse. So we need to um, find the, the proper value for a proper range for the distance between O and P. Uh, what's more is once we have um, uh, all the parametric relation between uh, K and M, these are all the lines that's uh, available for such um, uh, for such uh, intersection. And we can see that th these lines uh, forms a uh, a nice um, wraps around a curve, very smooth curve. And this curve is uh, can, uh, is not arbitrary, and we can determine that or find an exact formula of the curve based on the family of lines we have here. Okay, let's start from uh, uh, simple code to uh, solve this problem. Okay, the first step is uh, because we need to find the uh, the. Uh, the solution, uh, the intersection between the lines and uh, ellipse. So here is uh, the line, and uh, this is the curve. We just need to uh, solve x and the y simultaneously given the two formulas. Plus y over 3 equal to 1. And this is y equal to uh, k x plus m. Okay, and then we can just uh, use the solve function to uh, find the analytical solution. And these are the uh, solutions. Okay, and then uh, we just uh, replace x. I will just find uh, extract uh, the actual formula for x and y uh, by using the replace function. And you may wonder why the expression looks so simple after simplification. Uh, because these two results are um, direct, the are direct computed for the x and the y uh, for point P. Okay. Okay, so let's see how it works. So first step is x is replaced by uh, the S O S O because uh, so uh, has two sets of solutions. So what you have here is uh, part one and part two. So this guy corresponds to uh, the x value for a and b respectively. And same thing for y. Okay. And then let's do, um, or let's recall the vector sum for um, two vectors. One is OA and B is OB. And P is uh, determined by OA plus OB through a vector sum. And how is the vector sum done with uh, coordinates? Uh, if X, o, uh, A is say, uh, because O is the origin, so uh, OA is just the same thing as uh, the uh, the coordinate absolute coordinate for A. So let's see, it's x one, y one, and for example, this guy is x two, y two. So eventually, OP is just uh, uh, the component wise sum. So goes to x one plus x two, and y one plus y two. So this is uh, what's done uh, in 
this command. Okay, so you just add uh, x and uh, y uh, respectively, and you simplify that. Uh, you will have uh, the solution for uh, point P in terms of K and M. So it's determined by K and M. And let's see uh, if the if this one looks great. Uh, well, if you just quickly look at this, uh, the expression, though it looks uh, fairly tedious, but at least you can see there's a positive and a minus sign here, you know. So it's expected for them to cancel each other uh, to get a very simple expression. Okay, now uh, let's plug in the x for p and the y for p into the original ellipse. The reason is p is on the contour or on the curve. So uh, the, x, uh, the x coordinate and the y coordinate for p must be a valid solution for this curve. OK, so this is the uh, equation we have after we plug in uh, the km expression for x and y into the original curve. OK, now we have one equation and the two variables. Um, so we can just uh, convert that into um, another way of thinking. It's look like, uh, for example, x equal to a uh, y equal to two times x. So it's a uh, one equation with two variables. So instead of thinking, but it's a uh, sort of uh, you know variables more than number of equation case, we think about it's like a function. You know, uh, we think y is the uh, uh, independent uh, x is the independent variable and y the value of y depends on the value of x so it's the same thing here uh, it's 4 m square uh, over 3 plus 4 k square equal to 1 so in this case we can think about m is a function of k so to find the expression for that m we can just uh, solve uh, the equation uh, Assuming m is a um, assuming k is a constant, so this is the eventual value we have for uh, m square. Okay, so if uh, without without um, uh, without uh, the uh, square here, it must be a square root of this guy and plus or minus, um, because I take the square of the expression. So the two expressions, uh, the two parts of the two parts of the solution are actually identical. Now let me just uh, plug in m uh, back into the solution for x and y for a and b, because I can do that in, in two steps now. The first is the solution uh, I get from directly solve. Okay, solve from uh, for the x and y in terms of k and m. And then I can also replace m with k because the, this is the solution I have uh, by solving this equation. So I just plug in the values. Okay, immediately I have v1 and the v2 uh, determined only by k. So v1 and the v2 are just uh, the uh, vectors for OA and OB. And uh, let's just do that again. Find the uh, more simplified uh, relation for P. Because at these steps, I find the coordinates for P in terms of, in terms of uh, K and M. Now, I, after I solve that equation, and I have the um, expression for v1 or oa or b or v1 v2 in terms of k only so i can simplify the coordinates for p again and i can get the uh, exact uh, coordinates for p only depends on k so to solve the original equation i can just uh, plug in the uh, pythagorean formula for distance x squared, uh, for distance squared, x squared plus y squared 
is the distance squared for OP if uh, X and Y are the coordinates for P. So I can just plug in X and Y with these two values. Uh, and uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, these two values and then replace m with uh, uh, replace m squared it should be m m m with uh, this guy yeah. okay so this is the expression that I have for um, the for the uh, distance squared. Okay, now you can just uh, plug in like minimize or uh, optimization function to find the, the value for to, the range for value OP. Uh, notice that uh, K is between the absolute value of K is less than uh, half. So K square is between zero to uh, to to one one quarter. So we can just replace that with t and t is from zero to one quarter. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the graph of this expression. Uh, we can use minimize function, or if we just look at uh, the graph, it's it seems it's monotonic. So this function must be um, ha must have its range at the two ends. So if we can choose um, like t equal to zero and find the lower bound, and choose t equal to uh, one quarter to get an upper bound. And don't forget that the eventual solution is actually uh, the distance. So we need to put the square root here. So it won't change the monotonicity of the solution, but it actually change the, the uh, actual value for the uh, lower bound and the upper bound. Okay. And also we can just uh, uh, create a nice animation to show how uh, this diagram varies uh, given um, a changing slope. Okay, so this is the diagram. So if we uh, change the slope, you can see uh, this parallelograms always hold uh, inside of this ellipse. And to make this uh, uh, animation look nature to us, I plug a uh, minus slope here. Uh, because this graph is symmetric, so it won't really change the, uh, uh, the structure of the problem too much. Uh, without the slope, it looks weird. Because um, say we want to uh, move it to the right, uh, because the slope, the, if without, without the negative sign, if I increase the slope, this means this line AB must rotate uh, counterclockwisely. So that looks kind of strange if we, you know, move the slide and uh, this graph seems moved to the opposite direction. So uh, you can just choose to put the minus sign here to like make it like more nature. Okay, now let's uh, find the, the envelope because as we move this slope, we can see we have a bunch of lines. Okay, it looks like it's just doing very simple rotation, but it's not. So we need to uh, actually divide the possible range for K into you know, some pieces. And we just exam this line. Um, if we choose different slopes. And I also add a color function that will uh, encode the, the line based on its slope. Okay, now this is the family of lines we have here. So this 
are the colors based on the slope. And we can clearly see there is an arc here. Okay. Now uh, we, are ne we need to uh, find this arc, which is uh, uh, called envelope in mathematics or in calculus. So this is uh, uh, the Wikipedia page for uh, envelope. And though this, this thing really requires something like, uh, you know, take derivative or that, uh, to taking a derivative to find uh, um, the actual curve. But in our case, because this curve is, um, is uh, quadratic in, in terms of k. So uh, because we can just move uh, y minus kx equal to that thing and take the square of bo on both sides. So the k won't be more than uh, quadratic, that is the power of 2 in this case. So we have a relatively simple solution to that problem. And this is actually a document uh, in the Wikipedia page. So this is a, uh, what we need to follow. Okay, uh, I, I'm also going to show uh, the book that I use for calculus to, um, you, can, you can read to uh, understand a little bit more about uh, what's behind it because uh, in general you need to use sort of uh, implicit derivative uh, for that or, um, or take the partial derivative of f respect to t to find the solution. But here uh, we are dealing with a special case. Uh, in this case, um, f t x y is a polynomial. Uh, it is because after we move uh, y uh, k x to the left hand side and the square both side, it is a polynomial um, with the respect to y x and k. So uh, this gives us a really simple way to solve this type of problem. Uh, so in our case, we just uh, follow this example here. So for example, um, we have in um, the uh, denominator, and the, though it looks quite different from the expression we have here, but once you make it uh, um, into one line form, uh, you will have a quadratic equation with the respect to t. So it's t squared uh, plus something times t plus 11x. And in this case, you take x, y as constant, and the t is uh, sort of, uh, you know, the root, the, the, the x variable in the uh, unknown, in the quadratic equation. So to have uh, this equation to be um, the envelope, uh, you need to have sort of uh, uh, only, sort of only one solution for t, uh, which is a uh, identical to this statement. Uh, so the equation of an envelope can be found by setting the discriminant of f to 0. So uh, in our case, because we have the, we have the uh, quadratic equation, the, this step to this step is really easy. For example, we have uh, x squared plus uh, a x plus b equal to zero by uh, just making a square or just to use discriminant rule. Uh, what I mean by uh, making this uh, perfect square is uh, you can either do that, for example, x square plus uh, you, you take it at two times a over two x plus b equal to zero and uh, x square plus 2 times a over 2 times x plus a square over 2 or a square over 4. Equal to minus b. And uh, let me move here. And plus a square over 4. Okay, this guy is a perfect square, and uh, uh, it basically it you are trying to solve something like u u square equal to a square over four minus b um, with 
u equal to x plus a over 2. So that's the, um, that's the uh, make it polynomial, like a sum of perfect squares. Uh, the other way is just uh, if you are familiar with this type of problem, it's uh, the discriminant delta is just uh, uh, a squared minus uh, 4, 4b. So uh, the thing in the middle squared uh, minus 4 times the thing times this thing. Okay, so uh, we are going to just use the same argument for uh, this for this problem. Uh, so here, if we just solve, just like the uh, example here, we are going to solve that equation in terms of k. So k is the uh, t here. So if we solve that, okay, so we will have this expression. And because we are only thinking about discriminant, so the only thing that we are interested in th is this part. Because x squared um, minus 1 squared, this, is, this thing is always like positive. You know? uh, we only need to think about this part. And we want this part to be 0. Uh, it's uh, minus 3 plus 3x three squared plus 4y squared is, is 0. So this is the envelope. So now let's uh, just uh, put the envelope, uh, overlay the envelope on all the, uh, on all the lines. So this is the curve. Okay. So we have uh, a perfect uh, uh, match of this dashed curve and the other lines. Okay, so this is the solution to this problem. I hope you learned something. And I'm going to show uh, the book that I use for reference uh, if I need to find something um, about the concepts, uh, typically for this type of level of uh, problems. Enjoy. Thanks for watching. Okay, the book that I used for reference is written by Thomas. Uh, it's Calculus and Analytical Geometry. It's a huge book uh, written by uh, MIT professors. Uh, this is a very well organized book and with beautiful uh, illustrations. And the content that I covered is for 12, chapter 12, uh, section 6. Uh, let's go there. Uh, you can see this is a very high quality printed book. And this chapter is about something very useful for this type of analytical geometry. It's about partial derivatives, which I've shown in the Wikipedia, and um, implicit derivative for a more uh, complicated problem with a constraint like Lagrange multipliers and so on. And we can see uh, this chapter is dedicated uh, to this topic and give you very nice examples. And this book also contains a large amount of exercise. So I really recommend uh, anyone who are interested in uh, beginning calculus stuff to try this book.